In this tutorial, I will give you an overview of XY scatter plots and how to create one using Excel. To illustrate, we will create an XY scatter plot with straight lines and markers. Note that the graph has two dimensions, one a horizontal axis and the other a vertical axis. The symbols represent the mean of the response at that level of the independent variable, in this case, temperature. The graph presents the means of two dependent variables, one being 3PGA and the other being Rubisco. The symbols have been connected by straight lines. Remember that these lines are not regression lines, they simply connect one mean to the next. The bars on a symbol indicate the standard error for the mean. The symbol is the mean, the upper bar is one standard error higher than the mean, and the lower bar represents one standard error lower than the mean. The narrower this range, the more confidence we have about the estimate of the mean. If the study were to be repeated, we would expect the value of the mean to fall within the range of just under two standard errors higher or lower 95% of the time. The standard error is used for statistical comparisons of means. If we simply compare means based on their numeric values, our personal bias will influence our decision. We use the science of statistics to remove our bias in comparing treatments. Sometimes means might be compared with a multiple means comparison test, such as the Tukey's test, and the results of the means comparison presented using letter notations. In this example, the first two means of this variable, the symbol has a small a beside it. This is a way of conveying that these two means did not differ with whatever statistical test was applied. The third mean, the symbol has a small b, and because it does not share a letter with the first two, then that mean will be significantly different than the first two, and so forth. However, when you have an independent variable that has a numeric scale, pairwise comparisons of means are not the best way to compare treatments. This is because a pairwise comparison does not take into account what is happening on either side of the means being compared. Instead of doing pairwise comparison, it is better to perform a regression analysis. Using regression, one can determine the rate of change, either increasing or decreasing and estimate critical points along the response curve. A regression analysis increases your ability to detect differences due to treatment effects. In absence of a regression analysis, a ballpark estimate to compare means can be made by multiplying the standard error by 3. For this mean, 3 times the standard error is approximately this distance. So if an another mean was below this plane, that would indicate that it is most likely significantly different from this treatment. If they differ by a shorter interval, they are not statistically different. If the beginning and end points to a response are significantly different, then the linear regression will also be significant. That would be the case for the first variable. The means at 32 and at 42 degrees Celsius differ, so a linear regression in this region will also be significant. Note that for the other variable, the means are very similar and the standard errors overlap, and so there are no significant differences for that trait. Now let's go to an Excel spreadsheet. It is best to arrange the data in a row and column format. The rows are different independent values. The first column will be the value of the independent variable. The second column is the mean of the dependent variable. The third column is the standard error, and so forth. This set of data is from an experiment that measured the effect of heat stress on the photosynthetic rate of corn leaves, ZMAs. Four temperatures were used, 28, 32, 37, and 42. Temperature is the independent variable. One of the measured variables, often called the response variable or the dependent variable, was the content of 3-phosphoglycerate, abbreviated as 3-PGA. This is the first 3-carbon molecule formed in the Kelvin cycle by the carboxylation of ribulose biphosphate 
by the enzyme Rubisco. The values of 3 PGA are expressed as micromoles per meter squared of leaf. These are the values given in the second column. The researchers also measured the content of the enzyme Rubisco, and this is in the fourth column. Because this experiment was replicated, a standard error could be calculated for the means of 3 PGA and the means of Rubisco. These are presented in the third column for 3 PGA and the fifth column for Rubisco content. There is heterogeneity of error in this study, which is why the standard errors differ among the means. In this case, the higher the value, the greater is the error associated with the estimate. This row column arrangement is also how you would arrange the data for more powerful scientific graphing packages such as Sigma plot. The Microsoft Office package can be used to create graphs, but this program has certain limitations. For example, in the case of trend lines and scatter plots, Excel needs the data for the independent variable to be sorted from low to high. Otherwise, it simply connects the dots based on the order they are encountered. Other graphing packages like, such as SigmaPlot do not have that restriction. Now let's create an XY scatter plot. We will begin with the temperature values and the means for 3 PGA. Block the cells containing the independent variable and the means of the dependent variable. You can use the mouse or the keyboard arrow keys while holding down the shift key. Now select the Insert tab in the Option ribbon. Note that there are a number of chart styles that can be created, such as columns, lines, pi, bar, area, scatter, and other. For this example, we will select an XY scatter plot with straight lines and symbols. We can now begin to see the chart take shape. Note the default for the horizontal axis is that it begins at the value 0. We can adjust the styling, so instead of starting at 0, we can choose the range to use. So choose the Layout tab, select Axis, Horizontal Axis, and the More option. I'll move this window over so we can better see the chart. Using this window, we can override the defaults for the horizontal axis. In this study, our lowest temperature is 28. So let's begin our chart at a little bit below this at 26 Celsius. So we can change the minimum value to be a set value of 26. Our highest temperature in the study is 42. So let's stop the axis at the value of 44. And as we move between fields, you can, start, you can see the chart being updated as we change settings. We can also change the spacing of the major unit to be every 2 degrees. And a minor unit every 1 degree. And we will also add tick marks for the minor units and place them on the outside of the axis. We'll click close and that will update the chart with our changes. I'm going to move the chart over slightly so it's not covering the data area. Now we want to add standard error bars to our means. To do this, go to the Layout option within the Chart Tools, and on the far right, click on the option Error Bars and choose more error bar options. The default settings for a graph are that both the positive and negative error bars are presented and a cap is placed at each end. We could change this, we could change the colors and the line style, but for the time being we'll just stay with the defaults. To enter the standard errors for this study, select the custom option at the bottom and click the button labeled Specify Value. This opens a window for us to insert the standard errors to display in the positive direction and the standard error values to use in the negative direction. In most analyses, the values will be the same, but there are some analyses in which they will differ. To enter the positive error values, click on the small toggle to the right and highlight the cells that contain the standard errors. 
click the small toggle again, and now we've entered the positive error values. Repeat the process for the negative error values, and remember they are the same standard errors. Click on the toggle, and click OK, and close the window. Our graph now has standard error bars. Note that the default for Excel that it places the standard errors in both directions, vertically and horizontally. The vertical standard bars are the correct ones to use. The bars in the horizontal direction are not correct. Our independent variable is temperature is a set level, not a random sample from a population. We need to remove the horizontal bars. Click on one of the horizontal bars and then press the delete key. This removes the horizontal bars leaving the vertical standard error bars. For the next step we will enter the means for the other variable. In this case it is the content of Rubisco. Under chart tools select the design tab and then click on the select data option. On the left side of the frame is a list of variables in the graph. In this software program, the variables are called series. Series 1 is the first we entered, which was 3-phosphoglycerate. To add additional response variables, click on the Add button to enter another series. We will give this one a name. We will call it Rubisco. The next field is the series X values. These are the values of the independent variable, in this case temperature. Click on the small toggle and block the cells that contain the temperature values. Again, clicking the small toggle takes you back to the previous window. We can now enter the Y values, which are the means of the dependent variable. and we can click OK. For this study, both the 3PGA and Rubisco means share the same values for temperature. This does not have to be the case for an XY scatter plot, so you can combine different types of studies into one graph. While we are here, let's give the first series a better name. Click on the series title and select Edit. Enter the name of the dependent variable. We will call this one 3PGA. While I'm at it, I'm going to add some additional information to the graph. I will also include the terms plus minus standard error. Now click OK and the chart will be updated. We now need to add the standard error bars for the Rubisco means. Under Chart Tools, choose the Layout tab choose error bars, more error bar options, and here we can now decide which of the series to add error bars to. In this case it will be Rubisco. And once again we can enter it exactly how we entered the error bars for the 3PGA means. And close. The standard error bars for Visco are now added to our chart. Once again, we have this default of error bars going in both directions. So click on one of the horizontal ones, press delete to remove the horizontal bars. Now we have the basic XY scatter plot with both of our variables and standard errors plotted. Note that by including the plus minus standard error in our legend, it's easy to interpret what the bars in each symbol represent. Now we can add other labels to the graph and improve its appearance. Let's start with the grid lines in the background. These can be distracting in many charts. So under the Layout tab, choose the grid lines, choose Horizontal Grid Lines, and choose Do Not Display. There, that improves the chart's appearance. If at any time you make a change that you don't want, use the undo button to take one step back in your changes. 
To illustrate, I will click the Undo button to take a step back, and the grid lines have reappeared. I'll select the Redo button to take us forward again. Now let's alter the location of a legend. Because the legend has been placed on the right, it is compressing the chart. We have lots of room to relocate it into this area. To move it, select the option Legend under the Layout tab. And we will choose to overlay the legend on the right side. That moves the legend into the graph and expands the area for the plot. We can also click on the legend and move it exactly where we want uh, to place it within our graph. I'll move it into that area because that will be a spot where it won't interfere with interpretation of the information being presented. Our graph needs to include labels for the axes. Under the Layout tab, click the Axes Titles option and we'll start with the horizontal axis, placing it below the axis. In the input field, type in the title to use. Since this is temperature in degrees Celsius, we need to give both the name and the units. I'll start by typing the name and a space. Next I want to insert a degree symbol. I can access symbols by selecting the insert tab along the ribbon, and on the far right access the symbol set. I'll double confirm that my font is Arial in order for me to have consistent font throughout my graph. I can now start scrolling through the different symbols to find the symbol I want. As you use this uh, menu a number of times you will see that it builds a list of symbols at the bottom and these are shortcuts so that you don't have to go hunting for symbols you are commonly using in, in your presentations. The degree symbol is in the Latin 1 supplement. I can click on that symbol, press insert, and you will see that up in my uh, area here it has now been inserted into my text. I can close the symbol window and now continue editing my title. And I will add a capital C to indicate that it is degrees Celsius and press enter. There, my horizontal title is now added to the chart. We also need to enter a vertical title to indicate the units that the means are expressed in. In this case, it is micromoles per meter squared. To enter the vertical title, go to Layout, Axis Titles, in this case we will do a primary axis, and you see that there are options of rotating, a vertical title, a horizontal title. We'll, at the end, switch it to a rotated title, but for entry purposes we'll place it in as a horizontal initially. We can now enter our units for our variables. I need to start with a Greek letter mu, so I have to go off and go to the symbol set again. And I could go hunting for the letter mu, but since I've used it recently, I can just select from my shortcut, press insert, and close the window. And now I can continue entering the rest of my text. And enter. We need to adjust the title to conform with proper scientific notation by placing the minus 2 as a superscript. To do this, select the title and click within the box. And move the cursor over to just past the M. And now holding the shift key, continue the arrow key to highlight the minus two. Now that that has been selected, I can go to the Home tab, go to the Font area, and in this box there is the option of converting it to a superscript. I'll press OK, and now the text has been converted to the proper scientific notation. Now we have our title inserted, we will now want to rotate it. So go to the Layout tab, 
go to axes titles vertical axis and now we will choose a rotated title our chart is now updated with both titles and we have maximized the size of the chart by rotating the vertical title note that you can also edit the rotated title just like a horizontal title so you can click on the title area double click and edit the text however it is much harder to see what you're doing even if you rotate your head 90 degrees I find it easier to edit the title in a horizontal plane and then rotate it later. Now we have a reasonably formatted plot, we can now improve the clarity. In this chart, the symbols are too large since you can't see a number of the standard error bars, especially for the rubisco means. Although these lines are quite separate, many graphs are easier to interpret if different formats are used for the lines. To edit a line, click on the chart and select the Layout tab under Chart Tools and on the far left is a drop-down menu and this will let you choose the particular series you wish to edit. One can also select the series by simply clicking on the line. In this example it's quite easy to do since the lines are quite separate in space. This may not always be the case so it's good to know you can always select the proper series or the standard error bars for the series using the drop-down menu. We will start with selecting the, the three PGA series. To alter the appearance, select the Format tab, and on the far left, click Format Selection. You can also get this option through a right click of a mouse. In this menu, the first option is the axis. By default, all series share the same vertical axis. If you happen to have a series with a different measurement scale than the others, here you could select to plot it on a secondary axis. This axis will appear on the right-hand side of the graph. The next option is the marker. By default, it is plotting a solid blue diamond at 0.7 size. We can change any of these settings. I will change it to a circle and set it at 0.5. Next we can change the marker fill. I will change this to a no fill so it becomes an open circle. I'll also change the line style and reduce the width of the line to one and a half points. And close and the chart has been updated with the changes I have now made. We will also do a change to the Rubisco plot. I'll change the marker to a diamond size 5. I'm going to change the line style to a dash line and a width of 1.5. Notice our symbols on the Rubisco plot are still hiding the standard error bars. I'll re-edit and remove the fill from the symbols. That improves the graph so one can see the location of the means as well as the standard error bars for the mean. However, we still have a problem at the highest temperature. Because the standard error bars overlap, it's hard to determine what the standard error value is for either point. Also, because of the colors used, this may not reprint well in a journal. I will first edit the symbols and lines to change the color to be black. So I'll start with the 3PGA series, changing the line color to be black the line color of the marker also will be black and do a similar change to the Rubisco series.
we still have this problem of overlapping standard error bars. In this study, there is no need to compare means between the two variables, only means within a variable. We don't have to plot the variables on the same scale. So a way to correct the overlap problem is to plot the Rabisco means using a different vertical axis. So we will select the Rabisco series and format the data series and now change and instead of plotting it on a primary axis we will plot this series on a secondary axis and press close. Unfortunately we've created a problem elsewhere with overlapping standard error bars. To adjust we'll change the limits to the second vertical axis setting its maximum to 300. So we'll go to layout, axis, the secondary vertical axis and change its upper limit to 300. Now we need to provide a label for the second axis and revise the label for the first. Double click on the first axis label and we will add in 3GPA so that it clarifies exactly which variable this axis corresponds to. And while we're here, I'm going to block the units and copy them. Now to enter a title for the secondary axis. Again under layout, axis title, secondary vertical axis title, And now I will paste in the units I had just copied from the previous title. And I will add in Rubisco to clarify which variable this axis corresponds to. Again, I'll have to correct the scientific notation because the superscript does not come through with the paste that I did. And now we'll go back and flip the axis so that it is rotated to expand our graph area. One last thing I will do is remove the default line around the chart. I will click in an area outside the chart to deselect it so you can see the line. Normally you don't want this line. If you review any published paper, this outer box is not included. So click on the chart, click on the outer edge, and do a right click with the mouse and select Format Chart Area. Go to Border Color and select No Line. Click on Close and the line is now gone. Now we have our completed chart. Once you are finished, make sure you save your Excel file. To insert the figure into report in Word or other word processing packages, simply click on the chart and select Copy. Open up your word processor and paste in your figure. In your Word document, you can resize, add a caption, and position it where you want. For the latter options, select the chart and do a right click to insert a caption, change the text wrapping, change the sizing, and other uh, formatting features. For instructions on inserting a best fit regression line, see part two of this tutorial. I hope this has helped you in learning how to create XY scatter plots using the Excel program.